Welcome to the Q&A follow-up on S&P Capital IQ webinar series on corporate valuation. The first webinar of the series touched upon discounted cash flow approach. And Vikesh Ministry, who I have the pleasure of being joined by, uh, it's actually going to be sharing some of the topics that came up as a result of that webinar in follow-up questions or the highlights of that webinar. Vikesh is a senior modeler with S&P Capital IQ application specialist team. Welcome, Vikesh. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. So one of the first things that came up out of the webinar was the, the current context in which we are at the moment. Low interest rates, uh, very narrow spreads, and interest rates is one of the key components within discounted cash flow approach. What recommendations do you have to the audience to ensure that they actually reach evaluation that uh, gives a good long-term perspective? That is a very current uh, environment-based question. Uh, we are experiencing historically low interest rates and real negative yields. One of the approaches that we have uh, recently discussed with clients is to look at aggregate corporate yield spreads based on rating category groups. Um, to capture the inherent uh, credit characteristics of a rating category uh, to produce a more insightful credit spread and yield calculation. That is uh, one approach that has been very useful. There are other approaches that we have used. One is to look at uh, specific company information um, where, a comp uh, where, where there is uh, an issuance looking at the yield to maturity coupon interest expense, and then looking at, looking at that information in the context of its industry. The second part uh, would also be to look at CDS data, CDS indices specifically, and uh, individual CDS securities to potentially isolate interest rate risk versus credit risk. Thanks for the generous recommendations. I'm going to now refer to a question that we actually got from one of the LinkedIn groups uh, in connection to the webinar series. So let me quote from that one. Uh, one of the areas that sometimes create challenges in good valuations is how to account for the soft side of organizational good practice. Uh, in particular, the example of good corporate governance. Do you think this can improve discounted cash flow valuations? Corporate governance does have a direct impact on uh, a company's earnings in the sense that good corporate governance often is reflected in uh, strong earnings, similarly bad corporate governance or uh, not as good corporate governance is often seen as a sign of weakness and then also reflected uh, in its earnings. So based on that, we at Capital, s and Capital IQ um, look through the full financial disclosure of N all companies, uh, specifically the management discussion and analysis and notes to look at uh, non-recurring items and one-time charges below the line. And by doing so, we're giving our clients the ability to have a clean uh, proxy for cash flow um, and something that they can compare across companies and industries. And this is something that's vital because all valuation is on a relative basis. That makes perfect sense. So before I round this interview, perhaps there's an opportunity to, to go a bit off topic. And uh, as you may know, there's a lot of discussions in the industry about whether loosened economic policy is having an impact on the real economy. What's your, what, what do you think is the consensus in the market based on the conversations with clients about effective uh, new investment opportunities which might have been created as a result of loosened monetary policy or is that not the case? What we see in the market at the moment and discussing this with clients is that the bottom line effect of the uh, loose monetary policy is that uh, the hurdle rate on investment projects has fallen somewhat and uh, the idea behind the loose monetary policy was to see uh, increasing investment projects by corporates and businesses. Uh, however, what has actually happened and what we observe at the moment is uh, corporations are taking advantage of this environment by uh, refinancing existing debt um, and reducing essentially the bottom line expenses um, and keeping hold essentially of uh, 
excess cash for these type of projects until they see a, a better economic or business environment in which they expect uh, the demand for uh, these new projects uh, to achieve their expected return. Thank you very much, Vic. Really insightful comments. So just perhaps to, to kind of close this interview, Discounted cash flow was the first one of a series of three uh, webinars or corporate evaluation that S&P Capital IQ will be running. Uh, the next one, in May the 1st, what can you share about it? So our up and coming webinar is uh, specific to leverage buyout, LBO analysis, and that is going to be followed by a merger consequence analysis that will round out the series. The key component of any valuation are the assumptions that drive the ultimate output uh, and this needs to again be put into context and looking at different valuation approaches and then looking at calculating a weighted average of those valuation approaches is very close to what is actually used in industry um, and uh, considered a market approach uh, to, to capture the perspective um, of different approaches and assumptions. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I look forward to the upcoming webinar and any Q&A that may actually come up as a result of it. Thank you again.